When you get yourself a brand new reptile, the most important thing is to learn how to care for it. And there are right ways and there are wrong ways to do that. So today, uh, let's just roast the heck out of this PetSmart care guide because it's awful. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. I gotta go get Diamond, stick around. Okay, for real this time, this is Diamonds, okay. Let's do two, okay? Today we're gonna do the veiled chameleons and then we're also going to do Cuban false chameleon. Just because they're a little bit different, but they have the same name and I don't think either of these care guides is gonna be right. And in the intro I said they're gonna be terrible, but I actually don't know that because I haven't even looked at them yet. Let's do the veiled chameleon first because I imagine that's what most of you are here for, much more common animal and the care is generally very difficult to get if you're getting it out of um, something like this. So let's just start it off. So first it shows a screen cage, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the experience level, it says that it's advanced, which I would kind of agree if you're giving it the wrong care, especially we'll see if that's how this plays out. Now the size of a veiled chameleon off the top of my head, I don't know. So hey, editor Matt, please put it in here if this is correct. It says 24 inches. So I think this, this makes sense. I think th this makes sense. Chameleons live for approximately five to seven years. This I think is right about the right age for a veiled chameleon. I know that it depends, right? Jacksons have longer lifespans if you treat them right. Things like carpet chameleons often have shorter ones. So it just depends on the species. Uh, and then we get to diet. So here's where things kind of go off the rails because as far as I know, veiled chameleons don't require any vegetables at all. They're insectivores. And then they outline the terrarium here, which actually isn't that bad, to be honest. Like it looks okay. I mean, probably a little bit too sparse and there's not enough horizontal climbing branches. So what's to say that you need? Terrarium screen lid, which I mean, if it's a screen enclosure, that makes sense. Heat lamp and UVB bulb, plants in a core, reptile carpet. No, don't do reptile carpet. There's no need for that at all. Water dish, hydrometer, thermometer, basking site beneath heat lamp and a misting bottle. Okay, yeah, that's true. So the problem is the UVB that it offers or that it looks like here is a uh, coil, right? Or a CFL, not linear bulb. You want a linear bulb, these bulbs are generally crap. I would stick away from them. So daytime temperature. So this is where we're going to do a little editing magic and we'll put say a care guide from Bill Strand, what he offers and we'll compare it to this. So this is 70 to 80 degrees. This is the daytime temperature on the cool side. Now, generally with chameleons, if it's a enclosure like this one that you see here, you're likely gonna have the cool side be actually the cool zone, which is the bottom and then it gets warmer at the top, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So let's call it the cool side, 70 to 80 degrees. Then your basking spot up to 95 degrees, and then the nighttime temperature drop, 70 degrees. Okay, 65 to 70. And then your humidity, 50 to 80%, but it doesn't offer that you need the humidity to be higher during the night than during the day. So that's something that's interesting. So far, I'm actually kind of impressed. This is not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. All right, so let's see how they want us to set it up. Use a well-ventilated three foot tall terrarium or screen enclosure with reptile carpet on paper towels covering the floor. Spot clean is needed and deep clean carpet every two weeks. Reptile carpet in general, I just don't agree with. It's a breeding ground for bacteria. It, you can get their nails caught in that, not that this should be at the ground anyway. So you could just do a naturalistic substrate because they're not gonna be eating bugs off of it anyway. So you're not gonna worry about impaction, but even then use the right type of substrate, do your research, this isn't a care guide. Uh, yeah, so then it's just easier to clean up the poops. Don't do reptile carpet. Then it's uh, offering the artificial live branches and plants, which I agree. I mean, you could always do live plants, which I recommend, but artificial works too. And then I would recommend giving them horizontal places not as well, not just vertical and diagonal. It doesn't mention that here, but uh, we'll let it slide. And then it's offering say eight inches, so no more than eight inches to the heat source, which could work, but it just depends on the strength of the heat bulb, right? So it depends your ambient environment as well. So that's what people always ask. Well, how strong should my heat bulb be? Well, it depends. I mean, if you're in a really cold room, you need a hotter one than if you're in a warm room already. So this is up to you to decide. Chameleons require a temperature gradient, cool bottom, warm top. Okay, so that's what I mentioned before. Uh, so this actually makes sense. I got no issues with this. Use thermometers in the cool and warm areas to measure, yeah, of course you wanna do that all the time anyway. And then mist your chameleon's habitat as needed to maintain humidity to use an automatic fogger. 
Sure, I agree with this too. Now it hasn't brought up a dripper yet because chameleons are gonna be drinking water that is moving, that is droplets. It's not gonna drink from standing water. If your chameleon is drinking from standing water, I know because I got a lot of backlash about this in the Madagascar video, you're not hydrating your chameleon correctly, period. Period. I asked Bill Strand about this. This is, okay, if you don't know who this is, the Chameleon Academy, if you're a chameleon person, you obviously know who Bill is. I asked him directly, if your chameleon is drinking standing water, what's that mean? It means that you're likely not hydrating your chameleon correctly. So yes, they will drink standing water if they're thirsty, and they're thirsty because you're not hydrating them correctly. Chameleons require 12 hours light dark cycle UVB fluorescent lighting to absorb calcium. Uh, yeah, so that's all true. You do need UVB. That is a good, you know, staple 12 and 12. And then what you should feed your chameleons. This is where it's going to get interesting to me. So gut loaded crickets, dubia roaches, blah, blah, blah. And then it gives you the uh, regimen for how to supplement. I actually see no issues with this at all. And then it says uh, power greens, fresh, dark, leafy greens, hibiscus. Chameleons hydrate by licking water from their skin and habitat mist daily. Uh, or instill a dripper system. Yes, so this is accurate. This is surprisingly good. This I, I was really mean to this care guide, but it's actually, that's pretty good. Okay. When should I contact a veterinarian? So all of this is just very generic stuff, which I do agree with. I don't think that there's really much, I mean, with chameleons, you're probably gonna need to go to a vet. They're pretty prone to stress and disease and sickness in general. So yeah, this is all good. I actually have no problem with this. I wish all of the care guides are this good. What's the year on this? It's 2020, so it's the same year as the other ones we roasted that were actually really, really bad. Uh, we did a leopard gecko one and we did a bearded dragon one. They were both pretty bad. I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. There are some mistakes, but none of them are fatal. Whereas with the leopard gecko one, it was like telling you that you could keep males together. It was really bad. So this one is actually not that bad. Let's move on to the other one. We'll go through that one pretty quick. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, PetSmart. You're redeeming yourself. Okay, so this is a Cuban false chameleon. These are not chameleons. It's an anole species. I actually have Cuban false chameleons. I take care of them. They're doing great. Let's see what they say on how to take care of them. Well, this isn't a screen enclosure, so at least they know that Cuban false chameleons aren't chameleons. Laid back and lazy. That is true. They definitely are that. One of the most unique looking lizards found in the Caribbean. Yep, expert. Uh, so the experience level beginner. You know what? I'll give it that. It's pretty easy. Cuban false chameleons can grow 10 to 15 inches. Yep, that is true. Uh, lifespan approximately 10 years. I got no problem with that. And Cuban false chameleons originate from Cuba. Uh, yes, that is true. And for behavior, Cuban false chameleons are branch potatoes. That is true. Spending their day uh, lounging on a branch, a male can cohabitate with a female. Do not house males together. Okay, so I'm gonna give this one a check mark, but from my own experience, I will say if you forever, like full time, put a male and a female, the male will breed the female to death. In my experience, this might not be with every pair, but the pair that I have, I had to separate because he was just going to town. So anyway, there's a joke there somewhere. Uh, Cuban false chameleon terrarium. Terrarium screen lid, heat and UVB. Plants in the core, reptile carpet, water dish, hydrometer, thermometer, basking, blah, blah, blah. So all this is actually right. I got no problem with all of this. Let's give it a check. So this is where usually where it falls apart in these care guides, but let's give it a go here. The terrarium, you want the daytime temperature for the cool side, so the bottom, uh, 75 to 80. Yep, daytime temperature. The basking spot to be not, okay, that makes sense, yes. The basking spot, I would say 90. And then they can drop 75, uh, 65 to 75, which I really like because this is, it works for where I am. I don't need supplemental heating um, at night. So this is all true and the humidity 68. This is all bang on actually. We have next to no issues here. I would always put a warning that if you get two animals you plan to put together, always have a backup plan to make sure that if it doesn't work out, you have somewhere to stick the animal that is the problem or that is being a problem too. Okay, how do I set up a Cuban Falls chameleon terrarium? One male requires a well-ventilated 24 foot tall terrarium at minimum with a screen lid. I agree, correct. Line the habitat with reptile carpet or two to three inches of sphagnum moss and cocoa fiber. Remove the bedding monthly, blah, blah. Okay, so I really hate reptile carpet. I know they're pushing their own product, so I get it. I understand why they're doing this, but reptile carpet is crap. Add a large and stable live artificial branch. So uh, yeah, they're saying you can do live artificial, which is true. Um, around the terrarium for climbing, hiding, branches should be slightly larger than chameleon's grip. Yeah, I agree with all that, but they should mention too that you need a horizontal and vertical, like up to, like you need multiple angles. If they're all the same angle, it's not good. They can get tired and issues with their tails and the whole thing. So uh, a temperature gradient, a cool side, warm side, 
Uh, low wattage heat bulbs provide a warm turn off heat element for 12 hours at night. Yep, that's all true. And because they can tolerate such a dip at night, you probably won't need to heat them at night. They're most active during the day. That's true, 12 hours day and night cycle, UVB fluorescent. Yeah, that's all true. And it's talking about calcium absorption. Uh, equipped habitat with th thermometers, monitors. Yeah, all that's good. Create and maintain humidity by using an automatic fogger, mister, or drip system. Yep, because same thing, they're gonna be drinking off of leaflets, branches, things like that, the walls. So this is good too. Uh, for more information, I don't really recommend consulting, but okay, that's fine. This is actually unbelievably good so far. What should you feed your Cuban false chameleon? So insects, primary food source feed and it goes through dubias and all that stuff, which is correct. That's right. Dust the food with calcium, whatever. And then for water, Cuban false chameleons hydrate by licking water from the skin habitat. Okay, this is, I'm blown away. This is impressive. And then the same thing with your veterinarian. I think this is the same with basically all species, so I have no issue with that. I am so impressed. I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. There's a few things it didn't mention, which I would definitely recommend to mention. So I am actually really impressed with this. Well done, PetSmart. These are getting better. If you'd like to see me do more of these, I promise you not all of them are this nice. Some of them are truly, in fact, roasting. Let me know in the comments section below. While you're down there, please hit like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. You get videos early, you guys get discounts on merch, all of that and more for as little as $1 a month. That's it, because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.